You want to see something cool? I made a set of plans with a cutlass for this build, so I started by cutting the parts needed and milling them to their final dimensions. I labeled all of my parts as I made them with a piece of tape so that I could pull whichever part was needed as I was moving through the steps. I'm gonna start the assembly by making the shelf portion that will raise and lower with the bottles on it. I grabbed the four solid wood parts needed for the body of the shelf and laid them out, paying attention to which areas would be seen in the final product and being intentional about the direction it faces. For joinery on almost this entire build, I'm using a simple doweling jig that Rockler makes. After lining up the joining boards and drawing a pencil mark across the seam, the jig can be clamped into place so that I can drill a hole to the depth needed. You base the depth of the hole off the length of dowels you're using. There's a collar on the bit that allows you to adjust the depth easily. With the holes drilled, now I can assemble it. Remember, you only have a few minutes, about three to five, to get things set in the clamps. So I have everything ready, the dowels, a mallet, clamps, and all of the parts. When using dowels, I always place a small amount of glue in the hole, then tap in the dowel. Make sure to not overhit it and distort its shape. Then I can place the glue in the mating part before setting it on the dowel. Once things are seated all of the way, I set a few clamps on it until the glue was dry, checking for square before walking away from it. While it sets up though, I started drilling the pocket holes for the plywood panel that will be the back of the shelf. Again, I looked at both sides before drilling any so that I could choose which would be the final seam face of the final product. I don't worry about using pocket holes here because it's never going to be seen. After drilling them all around the perimeter, I set it in place and used screws to attach it. Then before calling the shelf finished, I add in one more piece of wood. This will later be what I rest the lift on, so I not only screw it in place, but also use glue. And this is gonna be the first big assembly of the build done. I set it aside and started working on the body. I grabbed what will be the legs and cut in a small taper at the base to create a foot. I like to place an X on two sides before making any cuts, just to make sure my backwards brain doesn't mix things up. Then I use the Rockler tapering jig, which easily allows me to chop away the material not needed on two sides. Okay, and that is the only part that needs something special before building the side assembly. So I grabbed my other parts and started assembling. As I do that, let me tell you a few notes to consider. I always do a dry fit before applying glue, but then when I do apply glue, I do just a dab. To save on time in the end, I actually sand all of my parts before assembling them. So I do my best to prevent glue squeeze out when joining. A bottle is great for accurately getting glue in the holes, but I use a chip brush to get glue on the edges as well. I also like to have a rubber mallet around to switch over when things need more force to seat all the way. If you only have a wooden one, then use a scrap piece of wood on your board to prevent it from getting marred. After I made the first, I repeated by making a second side the same way, then also put together the assembly that the lift will later rest on. Ta -ta -ta. <laughs> Once dry, I continued building the body of the cabinet by joining the sides. It is very easy to get things mixed up. So after I did a dry fit, I set all of the parts in their given position and orientation. And this way, as soon as I started applying the glue, I could just run through it. The first step is pretty easy. It's just applying glue inside each of the dowel location, then tapping in the dowels. The second step is also pretty easy. Just apply a little glue to the ends of each part and then tap it into place. It's the third step that's tricky. Total, there are gonna be 14 dowels to get aligned all at the same time. And this needs to happen quickly before the glue starts setting up. Okay, two, four, six, eight, 
12. Yeah, sucker. But in truth, it went pretty dang smooth. Okay, so I turned it sideways, complimented it. Ooh. <laughs> and then set it in clamps for a few hours to dry. While the body is drying, you can keep yourself busy by cutting all of the plywood panels that will go in the different sections. I cut them all oversized to start so that I could wait until the body was done and get an exact measurement on what each one needed to be. To secure these in place, I drilled a few pocket holes on the inside face. Oh, and something I do when going into hardwood, like the legs here, I go ahead and pre-drill through the pocket hole to prevent splitting once I run in the screw. It adds time, but nobody wants a split component at this point. After getting both side panels in, I repeated with the center panel. This one is slightly tricky because there's no lip for it to rest on. So I grabbed some scrap wood that was the correct height so that I could set the big panel in place while I secured it around the perimeter. I flipped the unit over in order to have better access to the underside to secure the next two panels in place. And a tip here is you can clamp a scrap board to the underside of the rails so that you do have a flush surface to rest the panel on while securing it. Let me pause and thank this video sponsor, which is Ariat. I grew up in their boots. Last year I was introduced to their women's workwear line and now I have expanded into their casual clothing as well. Whether you're in the market for men's or women's workwear, boots or casual, Ariat truly does have you covered. They're a company founded on technology and innovation with the goal of making high quality, long lasting attire. Ariat is one of the first companies I know of that created a women's workwear line that was designed by women. It kind of seems obvious, but as a woman in the trades, I have found it very frustrating that I really only have men items to choose from. So this is really big for women in the industry. It's a small thing, but I love having a pocket I can put my entire hand into. Yes, I love that Ariat not only came out with this dedicated line to women, but they're also expanding on all their other lines and creating brand new ones every time I look. Yes, you can count on that I'm picking up some of those polos for the golf course. If you'd like to check out some area gear, then know that you can save 10% off your first order by using the link down in the description. For the metal shelf, not only is it a slight puzzle to get in, first the shelf, then the clamp can go on, but then I also had to switch to a right angle attachment because of the tight squeeze. But hey, it all worked out in the end. Alrighty, let's flip this back over and see the progress. Oh my gosh, this thing is heavy. Hickory isn't messing around, guys. Up top, I put in a few boards that will later give me a surface to attach some door hardware. Then I also split the top cubby into two by adding a center divider. And with that in, it's time for me to work on adding in the rising lowering shelf portion of this build. So I moved back to the shelf assembly I started this build off with and first added in some threaded inserts into the back panel. The placement of these inserts go with my exact lift, which is a unit made by Progressive Automations. It's actually marketed as a TV lift. So if you wanted to sub this liquor shelf for a TV, you can easily use the plans for a completely different function. The lift itself is easily secured down into the support members of the body. Then I placed the final back panel in so that I could go to the inside and trace the hole locations with a pencil. After punching through with a drill bit, I could set it back into place, then secure it to the lift with bolts. Then go around the border and screw in all the pocket holes. This is the first moving part to test out to make sure things look like they're working. And I was very impressed with how quiet it is. Ooh. <laughs> that thing's so quiet. What I did was extend the lift all the way up right now. And this way I could grab the shelf and set it on top using that lip I created earlier. While it was resting, I could secure it in place with bolts through the threaded inserts. Then I did the second moving test, which is much more suspenseful. I mean, did I do everything correct for this shelf to fit inside this body? Let's see. Three, two, one. What's that gonna do?
drop it. Slight tweak, slight tweak, but I don't call that a success. That front corner rubs just slightly, but that is an easy fix. Let me show you a unit from the front as this is where it gets even more exciting. With the body and the shelf working well together, now I need to add on the top. But in order for the back to rise and lower independently, I need to have two sections for a top. I start by being selective on wood and green to come out with the look I will love for the top pieces and cut it down to size at the table saw. This front section will be fixed into place. However, the back section will be floating and I have a small space in between the two. Let's work on fixing the front first. I put an even overhang on all three sides and I used a combination square to make sure it was uniform. You can also see I used a clamp to pin up a corner once it was good while I worked on adjusting the other. But then I could pin it in place from the underside with pocket holes I drilled in the rails before building the frame. Once that was fixed, I worked on the floating one. This was an experiment. I wasn't sure if it was actually going to work. What I did was set a collar on a drill bit and then counterbore into the body. Here, the depth doesn't really matter, but straightness does. Because next, I'm gonna thread in some screws. Yay. I picked screws that had a decent amount of threads, but then had an unthreaded portion near the top so that after I threaded in the body, I could lop its head off. And I used a grinder for this task. My intention here is to create pins sticking out of the body. I transferred these pin locations to the underside of the floating top section and counterbored more holes. These are just slightly larger than the pins I placed. The goal is to be able to set the top in place and it not struggle to go on. success one. Success two will be can it raise and lower without interfering with that front section. Let's push buttons. <laughs> Ready? Down! great it feels great the lift is not only quiet but it's so stable and smooth on the launch and the landing in both directions by the way I have a 5% discount code on the lift columns if you're needing a lift for an upcoming project I went ahead and set the upper limit so that the bottom of the shelf will land flush to the top of the top yeah technology if you can't tell I was so happy with it at this point but I still had one major component to tackle before I was in the clear and that my friends was mounting the doors when planning this project I wanted a piece of wood that had a ton of contrast character and a visual BAM <laughs> for these drawer fronts and as you can see I found the board for me. I waited until this point to cut them so that they would be exact to my openings and so I could make it have continuous green from left to right. Day. Uh, uh. I started by using my Rockler jig again to put a few dowels in the center partition so that I could glue on a portion of solid wood that would cover up the end. Next, I could start attaching the hardware. The right cubby will have a drop down door, so I placed two non mortise hinges on the bottom and a catch on the left. Instead of a drawer pull, I'm sticking with the sneaky theme. I installed something I think is super cool, and it's two parts. Here's the body, and then here's the ball that fits into its jaws. When pressed, the jaws close around it. When pressed again, the jaws release it. I took that and turned it horizontal and installed it on the underside of the drawer opening. The tricky part here is getting the depth correct so that the door comes out flush to the reveal you're aiming for, which in my case is flush to that center partition. I am dyslexic, so anytime I get math correct on my first go, I am super proud and I want everybody to know. I love this mechanism because it means I don't need to clutter the front with a drawer pull. Just a simple push of a finger will open or close the door. 
I could have done another drop door on the left. However, for fun, let's change it up to two swing doors. These hinges are mounted on the sides instead of the bottom. Then more math to get the hungry hippo openings mounted properly. Boop. Boop. Ah. Oh, it's too far back. Okay, don't look yet. Ah, I showed you when I want it, math. I'll show you when I lose at it too. This hardware is simple to adjust. Since the left was correct, I used a combination square to get the right one set to the same depth. Now, let's try that again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is more like it. Oh my gosh, how incredibly satisfying. I've had this idea for about two years, but I, of course, can add things to my to-do list way faster than I can build them. So to see this cabinet complete and working so fabulously, I was on cloud nine. Remember, I have a set of plans with all of my dimensions, cut list, and even a material shopping list if you'd like to build your own. Alrighty, and that is the build complete at this point. So let's add a coat of finish to not only make that green pop, but to protect it. I am going with one of my favorites, which is Gleam by Total Boat. I'm gonna be using a three-part mashup for this one, where I first apply a coat of Gleam's wood sealer. This layer is gonna fill in the green, it seals wood fibers, and it levels the surface to make for an ultra smooth finish. After I let that dry for about two hours, I move on to step two, which is Gleam 2.0. I actually want a satin finish as my final look, but if you want a satin or a matte final, you need to use a gloss to build up a few layers first. So I laid down three coats of gloss, waiting an hour in between coats. And this stuff dries very fast and evenly, so it's easy to knock out multiple coats in a day. Once I got to coat four, I switched over to satin. If you're curious, if you use matte or satin to build up the layers, then it can sometimes create a cloudiness. So you always wanna use a gloss for the buildup, then use whatever you want as your top layer. When the finish was dry, I moved it into the house and put everything back together. Ooh, ooh. The table I had here before was actually one of the first things I ever built, but my biggest complaint is I think having all the exposed bottles and mixers on top is just messy looking. I much prefer the Prohibition style where it's sneaky and hidden until you want it exposed. Although, truth be told, now that I have this in my house, I love the way that it looks open. The progressive lift comes with a remote on a wire that I Velcro to the right side so that it's hidden. With a simple push of a button, the bottles can be raised up. As you can see, the lift is so smooth and stable that there is no problem with things moving around and getting broken. I can even place knickknacks on top. Then going down to the cubbies, I have storage for mixers, accessories, glasses, or even a nice decanter. And I love the opening and closing hardware of these doors. Very fun. I really hope that you enjoyed this build and don't forget I have a set of plans, not only for this project, but for several others over on my website. I'll leave you a link if you're interested. All right, I gotta go inside and warm up my hands. I will see you on whatever I'm tackling next, guys.